Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our service here at St Nicholas from the parish of St Catherine of St Nicholas Southbourne. It's Corpus Christi Sunday today. That's the day the church remembers and gives thanks to God for the gift of Holy Communion. And taking part in that at the moment, for those at home, you're joining in a spiritual communion and the priests of the churches are celebrating it on behalf of all the people and we look forward to that day we might be able to worship together soon and of course we know from the 15th of June the churches will be open for private prayer so the beginning of the roadmap forward to reopening at some point for worship. Well, as we prepare to worship this morning now let's just pause, still our hearts and minds as we prepare to come before God. St Paul wrote that whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment upon themselves. Let us examine ourselves therefore and call to mind our sins. Let's say together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's say together now the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. So a special collect prayer for Corpus Christi. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption. For you are alive and reign of the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So Dean is going to bring us our first reading. A reading from Genesis 14, verses 18 to 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of the one God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Covid-19 has brought one question to the fore of pretty much every telephone conversation, email, text message and face-to-face interaction. And that is, how are you? It is a common question that we ask and are asked on a daily basis, currently far more frequently than normal. And we generally give the standard answers. I'm well. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm good, thank you. These are fairly trite replies, frequently unconvincing to our own ears, let alone those of the listener. Because life is far more complicated than that, especially at the moment. So who are we trying to convince when we utter those words? I find talking to you about Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, this morning, a slightly surreal experience. Most of us have been denied the opportunity of partaking in the body and blood of Christ for many weeks now. Instead, we are compelled by circumstance to look on whilst our priest celebrates and consumes on our behalf, as our proxy, so to speak. I don't know how you feel about that, but for me, it just doesn't seem the same. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Jesus' flesh is the true food, and his blood is the true drink. Any other diet leaves us empty, hungry and bereft of life. Jesus' stark words halt and challenge us, because we need to consider whether there actually is any life within us. Jesus is, of course, talking about far more than just physical or biological life. He is talking about a life that is indescribable, yet a life we easily identify when we taste it. We get a taste of it when we love so deeply and profoundly that we somehow feel more fully alive than ever before, when everything seems to fit together 
so perfectly, and all is right with the world. These are times when we become part of something much larger, more beautiful and considerably holier than anything we could have achieved on our own. These are instances when time stands still, and we wish the moment would never end. In these moments, we are in unity with God, and it tastes indescribably good. Most of us spend a considerable amount of time, energy and prayer in a futile effort to create the kind of life we want. Despite our best efforts, we sometimes live a life that is not fully alive. We ask ourselves, what am I doing with my life? We wonder if this is all there is to life. We ask if this is as good as it gets. And we despair of what our lives have become. Nothing seems satisfactory. We are despondent about the here and now and cannot envisage a better future. Somehow, we don't really belong anywhere. Those questions and feelings are not a judgment on us. They are a diagnosis of us. They are symptoms of our lifelessness. We are dying from the inside out. But there is a treatment for our condition, food for our hunger. And that is life in Christ. The flesh and blood of Christ are the medicine that saves, what Saint Ignatius called the medicine of immortality. But one dose is not enough. We need a steady diet of this sacred food. Jesus is our medicine, the pathway to good health. He is the way to the life for which, in the depths of our hearts, we all hunger. We don't work for the life we want. We eat and drink for the life we want. Wherever human hunger and the body and blood of Christ meet, there and only there will we find true life. By eating and drinking of Christ's body and blood, he, li he lives in us and we live in him. We consume his life in order that he can consume and change ours. We eat and digest his life, his love, his mercy, his forgiveness, his way of living and seeing, his compassion, his presence, and his relationship with the Father. We eat and drink our way to true life. But as I said previously, most of us have been denied the opportunity of partaking in the body and blood of Christ for many weeks. So on this Corpus Christi Sunday, how can we match our current circumstances with Jesus' words? Well, let me try to explain. The Church teaches that God is always present with us, often in inexplicable ways. God is with us in times of trouble, as well as during moments of comfort, in exile, as well as at a homecoming. But how can we continue to give thanks to God for the saving gift of Jesus at the present time, whilst also, like Israel in exile, looking forward to a joyful future. When we participate in a Eucharistic service via a streamed link, like we are this morning, 
because we are unable to be present physically, we can practice a form of spiritual communion. This term has been used historically to describe the means of grace by which a person, prevented by some serious reason from sharing physically in a celebration of the Eucharist, nonetheless shares in the communion of Jesus. This act of spiritual communion takes place at the point in the service when the participant would normally have received the body and blood of Christ, probably after seeing the president consume them. Well, this may not feel the same, and it may not be the same, but the church teaches that it has equal validity to being there and physically receiving the holy elements. Thus, by partaking in broadcast services, we achieve the same goal as we would had we physically attended that celebration of the Eucharist. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. We pray that the time will soon come when we can all join in doing that with our priest. But until that time comes, let us satisfy ourselves by making spiritual communions. Amen. And so as we reflect on those words that we've just heard, let's now use this opportunity to reaffirm our faith as we say together that statement of Christian belief, the Creed. Let's say it again. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who of the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray as Dave leads us in our intercessions this week. We pray for the church throughout the world, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Norman and Tim, our bishops. Lord Jesus Christ, you were always obedient to your Father's will. Throughout the world, the church renews your offering from the rising of the sun to its setting. We pray that we may unite in one body those who share in the one bread. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for this church and parish. We give thanks for the opportunity to share in worship from our homes. We look forward to being able to enter church this week for private prayer. And we confidently pray that one day we will once again be able to worship together in church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As you have given us the precious body and blood of your Son, grant that through receiving him in the Holy Eucharist 
albeit spiritually at the moment, we may be strengthened in mind and body to be true disciples and to do your will. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for this country and for those who lead it, for the Prime Minister and members of the government, and for their scientific and medical advisers. Give them the wisdom to make the right decisions at the right time, so that the impact of coronavirus on individuals, on families, on the NHS, on schools, on the economy and on society more widely is kept to a minimum. And we pray that you may guide the hands of all those searching for a vaccine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those parts of the world where there is conflict, violence and unrest. We place before you the unrest on the streets of America and the demonstrations that have taken place elsewhere in the world, including in this country. We pray for all those looking for peaceful, just and long-lasting solutions. Give those who are trying to make peace an inner certainty of their calling and constant patience in their efforts. May hearts which have been darkened by violence discover a different light and a better way. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the weak and marginalised in our society, for the disenfranchised, the homeless, the imprisoned, the despairing and the humiliated. And we pray for all those working to help others, for food banks, for those working with people on the streets, for mental health charities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the sick, whether in mind, body or spirit, especially for those affected by coronavirus, for those undergoing treatment, for those moving towards the end of their lives. And we hold up to you all who care for them, family and friends, nurses and doctors, care workers and volunteers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we commit into your hands those who have run the race, kept the faith and gone to their reward. We pray for the recently departed, especially those who have died alone, suddenly or unprepared. And we pray also for those whose anniversaries of death fall this week. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So let's draw our prayers together as we say. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So on this day that we give thanks for Holy Communion, we send the peace of the Church to you, and if you're at home with others, do share the peace with one another. And of course, if you're home alone, as we do each week, we send you the peace of your Church family. We are the body of Christ. In the one Spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that have become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest. He offered himself to you as the Lamb without blemish, the acceptable gift that gives you perfect praise. At the Last Supper, seated with his apostles, he left this memorial of his passion to bring us its saving power until the end of time. In this great sacrament, you feed your people and strengthen them in holiness, so that throughout the world the human family may be enlightened by one faith and drawn together in one communion of love. We come to this foretaste of your heavenly banquet to be transformed by your grace and restored in the image and likeness of the risen Christ. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Rejoicing in the Holy Spirit, your whole church offers thanks and praise, together with Justin, our Archbishop, Norman, our Bishop, Tim, our Diocesan Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all those whose lives bring hope to this world. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Nicholas, St. Catherine, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Corpus Christi. The blood of Christ shed for us. Almighty God, 
we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So as we come to the close of our worship, please do keep an eye on the notices on the website. As many of you know, the government announced this week that churches and places of worship may reopen for individual prayer, that's as an individual, or with members of the same household, from the 15th of June, that's Monday. Now, please, as I say, keep an eye on the website when the church will be open for private prayer. We're hoping to do it at the same time services would have been at the churches. Uh, so on Sundays that will be 9 to 10 at St Nicholas, open for private prayer, and uh, St Catherine's 10.30 until 11.30. There may be other opportunities we can open as well, but we do need volunteers because the church does have to be cleaned after every um, time we've opened for private prayer and we need people to volunteer to do that. We also need people to volunteer to come and staff the church so that we can open it. We're not in a position, unfortunately, uh, because of the restrictions, to be able to leave the church just open um, at any time. We do have to staff it. So if you can help with that, please let myself or the wardens know and we will try and get the buildings open as much as possible for people to come and to pray quietly. Next week will be morning worship and we look forward to that service. But in the meantime, as we go into yet another week, my prayers are with you all and we continue to pray that the church would once again be able to reconvene together in our buildings to celebrate Holy Communion together and to, as one body, continue to serve Christ in our communities, as I know many of you have been during this, uh, this difficult time. Let's close then with the blessing. The Lord be with you. Christ, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.